and we are rolling hello everyone welcome back to the weirdo watches podcast the podcast at slightly off where we talk about movies that are weird from the weirdo watch list and other movies we have seen throughout our movie going um weeks my name is yeah. mikey and that is your host sam and let's Hi. yeah we're, we're here to talk about movies uh-huh how have you been we're talking about i've been good i've been good i've been busy uh, DJing a lot yeah but you know what keep that party going um how have you been i've been i've been pretty good too uh movie uh, watching has been slowing down but that's just because i've been playing video games really like what can we talk um, about video games for a second in well, the, on the podcast about, you know is the, that allowed yeah the game i mean you know like break the ice a little bit get the banter going uh the game awards are going on right now but i didn't watch any of them are they really yeah, because okay. I was... Those are kind of fun to watch sometimes. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I have watched quite a bit since the last episode. Really? Okay, tell me. Still still quite a bit, um, but for, uh, to continue on video games before I talk about movies, I yeah. did get really into Phasmophobia. Oh, yeah. That ghost hunting video game. Uh, I've been playing it... A little it late to that, huh? No, I've been playing it for years, just... Oh, really? Once okay. a year around Halloween, since it's a scary horror game. Yeah. But something happened this year where it clicked, and I was like, yeah. let me get good at this, and now I can actually, like, play the game, figure out what the ghost is, and be good at it, and consistently play and it. And you're not scared anymore. I'm a little I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little, I'm a little spooked sometimes, but, yeah. but I'm pretty good at the game now. I don't, I don't like it when the good. ghost is coming after me to kill me, so I figure out what the ghost is before that point happens. Yeah, that's why you got so good at the game. That's you were so good. scared. Yeah. yeah. I get it. That's fun. Uh, I've never played that game, but I've watched people play it. and It's, it's yeah, no, it's a, t it's a ton of fun. I, I yeah. really like playing it. I play it on my Steam Deck all the time. You have a Steam Deck? I got a this Steam guy's a deck. real gamer. I'm a real gamer now. I can now I can play video games and hang out with my wife at the same time. I don't have to be shackled to my computer. Have you ever brought it to a movie theater and whipped it out and played video games when the movie sucks? I have not. I have not okay. done that. If I go to the movie theater, it's usually because I want to see the movie and not because my yeah. wife wants to see the movie. I feel like it used to be, for me, there was times where I worked at theaters, which you also worked there, so me too. you relate to that. Uh, movie Pass was a thing. Anytime that like I could just go to movies and not worry about the price and worry about how shitty the movie is, yeah. I loved just going, and then like if the movie was trash and nobody else was in there, just like fucking playing shit on my phone. Like I love like that like home theater vibe when you have a small place to yourself. Because nobody else wants to see the trash ass movie that you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because then it's you can just like, you, you do whatever you want. It's your theater. You're fucking by yourself. It's great. I love that. You can sing along to Wicked if you're by yourself. Oh, you can sing along to Wicked too. Uh, because they're doing sing along show times like starting like next week, I think. <laughs> I heard. I heard it started on Christmas, maybe. But, yeah. They're they're uh, yeah, they're, they're, roll, they're rolling those out. I'll be there. But, yeah, that's what I've been playing. I mean, for the, nice. mostly that's what I've been playing. Other than that, I finished Batman Arkham Asylum for the first time, which is a pretty solid game. Hell yes. Um, and that's it, really. I get just mostly that. Uh, I got myself hooked back into Rainbow Six Siege, which I haven't played since college. Okay, yeah. Back in my toxic gamer days. Uh-oh. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's like I relapsed. And now I'm back oh. to playing the game that made me angry at playing video games. Call me Mike. Yeah. I'm angry Mike. I'm hard Mike. I'm hard Mike. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, like, I don't play, I don't take the game like too seriously. At least not yet. Who knows what'll happen? Yeah. Well, if you ever start being really, really toxic, I'll have to. As long as listen, I, I already tonight. know I'm not gonna play Overwatch. That's I'm I've gotten rid of that one. That one's never coming back. I don't think. That's good. That's good. That's just a me thing now. Yeah, that's that's a you problem, not a me also problem. I got uh, part of my tattoo on my leg filled in. Um, 
And I have a big That's old Zarya right. tattoo. You've got an Overwatch like, tattoo. You're, yeah. you're, you're a nerd. I'm a big old nerd, but I did not get the Overwatch part colored in. I got Mabel and Dipper from Gravity Falls Hell and yeah. Mario all colored in. Nice. But uh, I got some few more hours to go on this bad boy, and it's yeah. hurt. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Gee. Oh, gee. I I haven't gotten a tattoo in like well over a year. Last tattoo I got, I got like um like stitches tattooed. Yeah. Like around my ankles, so it looks like someone like stole my feet and I had to get new feet installed. Thick. But that one hurt because they had to go over my Achilles yeah. tendon. So that yeah. was that was a crazy experience getting like just my ankles tattooed. Yeah, just going just going right over both of my tendons and my heels. How long did that take? It didn't take that long because again, it w I did just want like cartoon style stitches going across, nothing super realistic. Yeah. But they're th it's a pretty thick tattoo where like the guy was just like drew a sharpie and then just traced over that with a thick needle, just going thick. right around both ankles. Thick. So it was more awkward to do, especially like trying to like rotate around. So he yeah. Did, have a good angle to work on but oh wow yeah i mean i'm pr I'm, pr I'm still pretty happy with the tattoo of my dad not so much because he thinks it's stupid but i think it's pretty good hell yeah yeah but dad look it looks like my feet were taken off and put on a re it looks like, yeah it looks like someone tried to steal them it's dad don't you understand He'll yeah. never understand me. I th I think what what needs to happen is I need to get the rest of my entire body tattooed except my feet under where that stitches happen. You know. Yeah. So then yeah. it lo really looks like it's somebody else's feet. Hell yeah. Yeah. I I I put them out on the podcast, but I don't want to pull my feet out. <laughs> this is a movie yeah, not podcast. For free. Not yeah. for free. Not while we're not getting paid to do this podcast. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, speaking of movies, have what have you watched? What have I watched? I've uh, I've been going through the backlog of twenty twenty four movies that okay. I've been missing out on. So okay. I watched quite a number of them, but the one I did want to get to the most was I watched The People's Joker. Okay, I don't which know what that is it it is a uh, it's a it's basically the Joker, but uh, it's a trans woman. Okay. And it's not authorized by DC in any way, shape, or form. Uh, okay. There was a lot of trouble to get this movie, like, released in any meaningful way because, again, it, like, DC didn't approve of any of this. It's a parody of the Joker. And, like, other associated DC characters, it's... No permission from DC whatsoever was involved. But... Yeah. Um... It basically, I think the director Vera Drew uh, made it as kind of like a way to like reclaim the Joker from all the weird incels who like saw Joker like five years ago and was like, "This movie is about me specifically. I relate to this because I also am a shut-in who struggles with talking to women." <laughs> so with 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 this one, it's basically yeah, like. Um, the director kind of like telling her own trans uh, story through Joker characters where you know like she moves to the big city which is Gotham and wants to become a Joker on SNL except it's not called SNL but also oh. SNL is controlled by a like um, like Batman who's also kind of a fascist <laughs> and I and wh where did you see this movie? Uh, it's available to rent. So it, they like they got it's on Mubi right now. Actually, I Mubi. think it just premiered oh, yeah. on Mubi. But otherwise, you can rent it for a few dollars online. Okay. So <laughs> it got they 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 basically yeah like won the court case too. They, I don't think there was a court case, but they got the the uh, parody all clear to be able to put this movie out like on nice. a wide scale. Good. But and yeah. was that worth it? I, I enjoyed it. Not as much as, like, something like I saw the TV glow. But it has the same kind of visual language as a Tim and Eric skit. Where okay. everything's green screened. It. Like, a lot of sets are over-exaggerated. There's a lot of, like, cartoony elements to, the f like, the physical world going on around him. Yeah. But the humor does not match. 
Tim and Eric. No. No. So, I mean, like, um, the director ha like has a working history with that um, Tim and Eric crew. I think, like, Tim Heidecker's somewhere in the movie. I didn't recognize him. Um, oh, really? Bob Odenkirk and... Yeah, Bob Odenkirk and Tim Heidecker have voice appearances in the movie. I didn't recognize well, yeah. them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But they've got lots of experience, like, in in that uh, adult swim circle, I guess. So you watch, yeah. you watch the movie, you see some bit that happens, like... You know, like, the penguin will eat, like, a cartoon fish and it'll turn into a skeleton. It's, like, very Tim and Eric-ish in execution, but none of the humor is, like, that nightmarish sort of, like, skit where, like, fucking Tim Heidecker, like, blows up for no reason. Yeah. Right. So, so is it good? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay. I, I, I do recommend it. I was talking to like um with Austin about it, enemy of the show Austin, where mm. he he didn't quite understand that it was not a DC movie and that it was just kind of a like its own like separate thing, where like um yeah. the director's just yeah like telling her own trans uh, experience story through using the Joker and having you know like her toxic relationships be Jared Leto's Joker. He, d he didn't yeah. quite figure it out from the trailer or just reading about it online, so I had to, like, explain it to him further. Is he gonna watch it? I don't know. Yeah, He'll have to pay for it, so I, that's a big stretch for him. <laughs> is, it, is, it a, is it worth my time? It doesn't sound like something I want to watch, to be honest with you. I mean, like... You, like, yeah, you like, I do recommend, like, looking into it. I mean, it's only yeah. 90 minutes, so... That's something. It's ninety minutes. It's a fun-looking movie. It's enjoyable enough. I, and it's I a comedy, it, it, like uh, mostly. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's just like it looks like a Tim and Eric skit, but it doesn't have that right. same brand of Tim and Eric humor. It's not the same brand of comedy, but it's still sort yeah. of a tonally a comedy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I'll watch the trailer at least, and then I'll probably never think of it again. But it sounds. Like, uh, it sounds like somebody made that up. Like, a trans <laughs> Joker movie? Like. More like the Woker, if, uh, if you're asking me. <laughs> nice. It just sounds like multiple buzzwords thrown together in, like, a, a stew of buzzwords that made, like, an interesting movie. It's like, what if, what if we did this with this, and sure. it was trans with Joker? Like, aha. I'm sure that's not what it is. But from from just the title alone or just the the premise alone. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely worth looking into. Again, I know like um it does have a lot of fans. It's got like yeah, it's got its own like um it's got yeah, it's got its own high praises like across the internet. And then some people are like, Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm in that I got it boat. Um, it's definitely not like my favorite of the year. Like, unlike, um, I saw the TV glow, which we talked about a little bit. Well, that movie. That's a great one. Yeah, it is. But this one, yeah, well, I enjoyed it quite enough. Nice little 7 out of 10. That's nice. 7 out of 10 is nice. What the fuck did I even watch? I don't even remember. You honest. watched Y2K. You texted me about that one. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, and then I, I said save it for the podcast. Oh, it was a bummer. I love Kyle Mooney. I was really, really excited for the movie. Uh, I went with my buddy, who was also a big Kyle Mooney fan. Uh, I don't know. It just didn't hit. It just, it's just not. They, I think I said this on Letterboxd, but they, it seemed like they forgot to be funny. Sure. Uh, like, they were so focused on some other things, and I was just like, some, like, they were focused on the subplot of, like, oh, they're high schoolers who want to lose their virginity, and then, like, that shit never ended up being, like, ever a joke, or, like, part of a joke. Like, they just kept, like, doing it, and then it was just like, oh, it never turned out to be anything. It, it played it so, itself kind of seriously for what it was, uh... I thought it was going to take some really fun, crazy swings, but it didn't do that much at all. Uh, visually, it was okay, you know. 
happy for Kyle Mooney making a cool movie and stuff. Sure. Screen the screenplay or whatever you fucking want you call it the script whatever you want to call this. Uh, it just wasn't there. The jokes weren't there. It wasn't that funny. It felt yeah. like a watered down. This is the end. Sure. And it was produced by Jonah Hill. And that's really all I gotta say about it. I guess. Uh, I mean, I go mean, check it out. Did you Did you see Brings Me Bear? Because I know like I've Kyle Mooney. that. Kyle Mooney wrote. He didn't direct it, but he wrote it and he stars in it. That's one I have not really? seen since 2017. But that's I one just that saw that on the weirdo watch list. Like, yeah, I saw that it was on the list. Maybe Maybe one of us will pick it one of these days. But, maybe. Um, but that's one that I definitely connected with when it came out in 2017. I really liked it. I haven't seen it since. Yeah. But I know, yeah, like, I, I deal, that's the only thing I know Kyle Mooney from. I know he's done, like, a shit ton on SNL, but I don't fucking watch SNL or anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my only, my only Kyle Mooney, like, experience is Brigsby Bear, and I think that's one that would hit. I, I, I hope it would hit on rewatch after all this time. Yeah. I don't I don't know much about it, but if it's classic Kyle Mooney like him being funny. I mean, he was actually he was funny in Y2K. His his character was yeah. meh, but like the way he delivers everything is just so fucking funny to me. Uh he could say literally anything and I will laugh. Um he just got a great delivery. Yeah. He's fucking fantastic. No, anyway, I know. Yeah. Like but I don't know. It, it, I think it was just too big of a, a scope for his type of humor. I think it okay. got lost in there because his humor is so... It can be so subtle, I think. So, so, so subtle. And, like, if anybody else delivered it, it just wouldn't work. And I feel like maybe some of this fell, fell victim to that. You know, like, these these were really funny when Kyle Mooney and his friends were talking about it and it, it was imagined in their head. But then when it gets to paper and then delivered by... Actors who are doing fine. I mean, Y2K, in Y2K, they're all doing fine. But, like, you're not Kyle Mooney delivering it. Sure. So, uh, maybe the nuances. What do I know? I wanted to enjoy it. I didn't. Two out of five. GG, go next. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Should have saw, saw Moana 2 instead. That's still on the list, though. I heard that one is also, uh, it's also not that good. Uh, that's what I've heard too. Yeah. That's why I'm not rushing on. <gasps> I just opened Letterbox and Enemy of the Show. Austin just rated it. Uh, not just, maybe, but four and a half out of four and a half stars. Oh, that was Moana one. That's, yeah, that's Moana one. Is like I swear okay. I just I I've got Letterbox open all the time. I know what he watched. Moana one. They, okay, the posters are this fucking same goddamn thing. The same. He did he did <sighs> give Moana two a three out of five. Okay, oh, not bad, not bad. But that's also against uh, at two point nine on Letterbox, but, but a lot of people are also very just like f at f like fine at best with it. Are you gonna go see Craven the Hunter? I kind of would like to, just because I, think, I know. I hope that's the one that breaks you. It might, it might, it might, it might break me. I kind of want to see it just to know if I would find Madam Web to be a more enjoyable experience or this one. Because I saw Madam Web like months ago. I never. I don't think I ever talked about it on the podcast. Yeah. But it's a no. fascinatingly bad movie because nothing works whatsoever. It's, yeah. It's one of those movies that is so bad. It's like not. It's not good. It's not so bad. It's good. It's so bad. It's kind of like fascinating. Like you're watching it as like a science experiment gone wrong. Where yeah. like none of the writing ever makes sense. It's not frustratingly bad in the writing. It's just like, how did this happen? How did this pass so many through so many executives and get the okay to release? Where, like, you've got a superhero movie, but not one punch gets thrown. Nobody does hey. any fighting. It's almost kind of like Terminator, where, like, you got the bad guy chasing after these women, these spider women... But they don't become Spider Women until a flashback or like like a premonition of the future, right? The thing about Madame Web, she's like an Oracle character in the comics, so she tells Spider Man yeah. the future, and they made her her own movie where she's a superhero. But again, she's not because she's blind and she sees the future. She doesn't do any fighting, 
so she just sees the future of these four of these like three women who all become different spider women and they don't ever become spider women in the movie only in premonitions <laughs> so it's like what's the fucking point what are we doing here how did this happen and and again like the writing's so bad everybody is phoning it in and i remember uh watching a classic yoda joe uh where like him and some of his like online friends were just talking about how um the only good part was sydney sweeney because she's also in it as a potent as a future spider woman except she's yeah also terrible in it and i tried confronting them about it in like youtube uh stream chat and they're like yeah no sydney sweeney she was the best part of the movie it's like no she fucking wasn't she was awful you only thought she was good because she's got huge tits and they're like that's not true no what are you talking about and it's like yeah it is i don't know what you guys are i don't know what you guys are talking about <laughs> sydney sweeney yeah so I think it's a fascinatingly bad movie, but and you want to go see Craven? I want to go see Craven because I want to know if Craven will at least be like competently better but still bad, or just unbearably bad where I hate it. But then again, sounds like the consensus so far is that it's just as bad, if not more boringly worse. Yeah, that's what I'm also worried about because then I'll be sitting there for two hours bored i'm out of my can't even make fun of it type of board like yeah they're making them worse and worse to the point where they're not even fun to make fun of anymore yeah like when do we stop they are stopping now because this is like uh i don't i think they said like uh they're done with the whole spider-man villain uh solo movies because they're never good and they never make money anymore venom's the only one that makes money and they just finished those for good thank god allegedly Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. My third one sucks. I never saw it. Don't bother. I mean, I mean, it's whatever. Sure. It's filler. It's whatever. Wicked. Go see Wicked. Have you seen Wicked yet? I haven't seen Wicked yet. That one's so no. fucking long. I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. It is kind of long. My, my 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 younger sister keeps begging me to see it, and I'm like, I'll get to it before the Oscars happen. That's my deadline. Mm, I got a lot of Oscar movies i mean they haven't actually come out yet but some very obvious ones like conclave and things like that that are like very oscar yeah. baby bullshit i want to see conclave I, so bad yeah i mean i have it i just have to fucking click play I'm just waiting on my own brain uh what else was there there's a few others nickel boys nickel boys conclave the brutalist but that one's also three hours and 40 minutes i think is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when The Irishman came out, I watched that shit, and I just didn't ever really like it. And it, just got, it, it got good for me at the end for, like, the last half hour or something like that, I remember. But, like, four hours or whatever it was. Three and a half. But, the, you three know, like, close enough. When, when a movie gets to three and a half hours, I think then you get to call it four hours. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I did not enjoy that movie that much was not worth my time i was more mad that i wasted that much time i i still gotta watch that one but again like i'll have to set aside three and a half hours to watch it yeah you know it's it not it three and a half hours and it's only two hours mm. hitman with glenn powell because that's a new movie that came out this year that i saw finally really that's a new movie that came out this year yeah yeah uh, he's like a he's like a um He's not a hitman. He works with the uh, the cops to pretend to be a hitman to arrest people who are trying to get like hire a hitman to commit a murder. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah, and uh, uh -huh. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's got like a steamy romance element where like Glenn Powell as one of his hitman characters falls in love with uh, somebody who's tries to like contact him for a hit. And uh, I would say like shenanigans ensue, but so it's, it's a, kind of a it's a fun comedy action yeah, yeah. movie. Yeah, not action. It's more it's rom com. There's no action in it. Oh, rom com. Rom -com. Okay. And Richard Linklater directed. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's Love yeah. That. 
Yeah, no, Glenn Powell's great in it. Uh, Adria Arjano, Arjona, I don't know how to say her name. Also really great. Those two are so steamy and sexy together. Love that. Yeah. It, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's, yeah, just super duper fun. That's right. one. Yeah, that's, know, it was on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, sounds yeah. Like a, sounds like a Netflix-ass movie. It is a Netflix-ass movie because they got the streaming rights for it. And then they were uh, like, yeah. this will be a great crowd movie. And then put it on Netflix. Hitman. Yeah. Yeah, Glenn Powell oh. plays like uh, yeah. My Gary girlfriend's Johnson. gonna leave me. She thinks I'm gonna. She's gonna never find me attractive again after watching this movie. Oh, I'm yeah. So handsome, it's I can't live up. So hot. She'll never Glenn look at Powell. me. Th oh. See, here's the thing. My wife does not my like. Wife. My wife does not like Glenn Powell's face. So I am all good. <laughs> I don't have to worry about her running away to Glenn Powell from me. So. We all have that worry. We really do. And I guess you're really immune to that. I'm immune to that. Instead, I gotta worry about... Uh, I mean, when he comes around and just starts stealing women. He just, steals, he just steals women. All of them. And just, like, multiple a day from, like, just small towns all stop. across America. It's disgusting, Glenn. You can't stop. We gotta, we gotta stop this guy. I'm gonna fucking beat him up if he ever... Ever walks in my girlfriend's direction. Because I know she'll leave me. And I will be distraught. Have you seen a... Glenn! Glenn! Have you seen anything else? What else have I seen? I, I don't know. You don't update your letterbox frequently enough. I know, because I don't watch that much shit. I started watching Super Bad the other day. Didn't finish it. Snowman with Michael Fassbender. You watched... <laughs> yeah? Did you watch that? Uh, I have 30 minutes left to watch. Okay, yeah, no. Um, I w Listen, as a guy who says uh, you should watch every movie, like, as a as a man, right? I'm a man. Uh, if, I, if I start a movie, I intend to always finish it. Especially, mm -hmm. like, quickly. You know, if I stop watching a movie, I intend to get back to it relatively soon. I don't... Yeah. start and stop movies and watch them like days after the fact uh -huh. it's usually a day of thing i'm gonna finish this or at the at the at the latest the next day what are you doing watching the snowman i i'm gonna finish it when i can yeah i christ it's good so far though good <laughs> ah it's pretty good i fucking hated that movie so much Really? Yeah, that movie's so bad. Oh, I'm loving it so far. Really? I lo I'm loving the cinematography, especially. It's fucking awesome. Uh, Harry Hole? Harry... Oh, yeah, that's his name, that's isn't his, it? That's Michael Fassbender's name, Harry Hole. <laughs> well, this is fucking funny. Um... How would it just yeah. stop? But if you're liking it, I, you're gonna ha you're gonna have to tell me more when you finish it. Maybe just start I mean, from the beginning before the next episode. Maybe. I, I I know it's on the weirdo watch list, but I was never really hoping we would land on it. Yeah, I'm not hating so far, but unless I mean, we'll see how it comes together. I think that kind of like it's following a crime serial yeah, killer. But there's so like, many it, better it, crime serial killer we can talk about in a little bit here uh yeah very true very true uh yeah i feel like i liked the vibe of it it actually in a similar fashion of the movie we're talking about this week uh had like a, a very specific style and it fucking worked on me i don't know what didn't you like about it i think it was just so like it's, it's been like a year since i watched it um yeah. So I'm gonna have to like yeah like look up to see if I did write anything. Um, a glowing review, glowing one star review out of me. Oh boy. Okay, all yeah. Um, all right, I did it for a scav letterbox scavenger hunt, where mm -hmm. the prompt was watch a movie deemed as cringe or has a rating lower than two point three on letterbox. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't Here, even let look. Let me tell you, it has a yeah. 1.8. Holy shit. Yeah. And all I wrote was, I'm sorry, but if a guy named Harry Hole is investigating my murder, I'd be pissed. 
man, I'm gonna have to finish this movie and then finish see if it's it gets ruined. I'm sure it doesn't get just ruined by the end if you guys thought it was just not that bad, but I yeah, no, I think I hated it more or less the entire time, not because of any ill contrived or poorly written or poorly executed thing that happens in the in the end. Uh. It was one of those just unbearably boring experiences where just like nothing in, nothing of real interest ever happens. I want to say like maybe I have to revisit it, but then again, all uh, I'm yeah, seeing think... is negativity from this yeah. movie, so I think I'm safe from a rewatch. I think you're safe. I think you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I just maybe I just am simple and I like watching Michael Fassbender be Michael Fassbender. You know, it's just simple guy. He's, you know, he's you know, playing may, the character very, very much like he plays every character. Maybe, maybe here's the thing, right? You're watching a guy figure stuff out and then tell you what he's figured out. Yeah. Because I and, watched and that guy's Michael Fassbender. Like, yeah, all right, cool. Two because, hours my time. Let's go. Because I watched uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe. In the first half of that movie what? is very much the same, where they're picking yeah. apart a dead body they find and then telling me what they're looking at. They're like, "Look at this here. Look at look at these stab wounds on the inside of the body. How did that happen? You know, this woman's lungs are pure uh, black, but she's she looks like she's never smoked a day in her life. What's going on that's here? Very. It's a good movie. I really do recommend Autopsy Jane Doe. I saw it back in theaters. Oh, all know. right. I don't need to recommend it to you then. Yeah, I don't remember it a ton, but maybe a rewatch. It. Maybe yeah, I remember a rewatch. Oh, remember. But but that's kind of like the vibe I'm picking off on what you you're getting out of the snowman is just Michael Fassbender figuring stuff out. Yeah. Oh which, yeah. Which I do I do like when I watch a movie. It's just uh, the snowman didn't work at all for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. They're not all going to be hitters. But um, if if uh, you're all set and ready, we can talk about uh, this episode's new movie. Let's do it, Angel Dust. Angel Dust from uh, Kakoryu Ishii from 1994. 1994. I didn't know that when I was just watching it, but uh, great, great shit for 1994. Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. What did you think about it? I know we talked a little bit before, kind of like yeah. prefacing it. So I just watched it today. We both just watched it today. Yes. Spoiler alerts for everybody there. Um, and I loved it. I love the vibe of it. I love I love the cinematography. I did the horrible disservice of watching it on YouTube, that's, like a lot of hey, people apparently it's, have. It's the only um, way to watch it. It's the only way to watch it. Uh, yeah. So I had the. It was beautiful for what it was, but I was watching this beautiful movie in 480. So like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that stunk. That stunk. But uh, like cinematography and just and, and like, I don't know. So much of this, so much of it was is was great. And and the sound, the choices with sound and sometimes lack of sound, really interesting. Um, but overall, the crime element of the story. I don't understand. I, I There's this mind control thing, and I love what the movie's doing with all of that, but I don't fucking get why. So we're, I don't know if you want to explain the movie at all much, but spoiler alert, obviously, but yes. why is he killing all these women? Um, I, that's what I That's what I don't yeah. yet. Uh, and I haven't looked anything up, and I'm just... So this is my fully off-the-cuff, like... I don't. I haven't looked up a single other person's thought on this, so I don't. Something might click. Something might be completely wrong in my head that I don't even know. But I really fucking liked the story that it brought me through, and then the ending was awesome. I yeah. still didn't understand why. There, there's, <laughs> but there's, it yeah. Really no, I, I, I think I am on the same page as you, um, where like I, I don't get like the the motivations behind everything that's going on. But there's a lot of execution elements that really do feel like a sort of like Lynchian nightmarish yeah. uh, to me, especially because I was I've been like just like very tired like most of the week, so like yeah. watching this almost just falling asleep at my desk, um, kind of added this level of like nightmare 
to it. Not in like the tradition again, like not in like um. I mean, there was the like, nightmare scene in the cave, which was yeah awesome. Really hard to see, uh, with the 480. Yeah. Uh, but it was sick. Um, but more just like um, where like there's like that like lack of like grasp on reality. Right, yeah. where where you where it's like it feels like a again dreamlike. It feels like you're in a dream, but it's a bad dream. It's a bad dream experience, not full on nightmare, but just bad dream. That's what that's right. what I felt like when watching it. Um, right. So I definitely yeah, still like, like a... really enjoyed it in that last yeah like half hour with like um she's like watching the TV of her like um ex husband or you know whatever that relationship is and right. He's just saying like um like. You can close your eyes, close your eyes and ears if you want to. You don't have to listen to me. And then she like fucking breaks down and freaks out. Where? Yeah. Yeah. And and again, just like the whole like um, vibe of it too, with like the color aspect of it being like very very like sterilely green. Oh my god, matrixy. Yeah, very That's matrix fine. greeny. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, cool. I like that. I mean, it, it, yeah. like, especially years before the Matrix. I mean, probably was even more of a way cool style choice then than than seeing it now. Yeah, and and like I do, I do think like the 480p like aspect of it too, kind of adds this level of like uncanniness. Yeah. Especially like with the size of the, like the monitor I'm watching it on. You know, I'm watching it on just my desktop monitor full screen so I really see like the fucking um, artifacting going on in the video quality and all the pixels really just distorting everything on screen yep. really just also and like again just like being like half asleep just add, uh, just adds this uncanny valley aspect where like nobody looks like a real person yeah kind of adding to that like level of um uneasiness you know part of me thinks this is going to be my wild guess at night analysis yeah from what i just watched so they were obviously lovers yes. in the past yes okay and he said like she's connected with a killer she's he says remember like they keep going like we're all kind of connected all that shit like it feels like she's a killer with him right from the past and then she, he is like brainwashed her so hard and has broken her like he she completely just broken her down broken her down broken her down and there's one more thing he has to do to break her down and that is to let her go and to get uh freedom and to get to get real love and to get an androgynous husband with yeah. female parts uh and, and and then to have all of that ripped away as like some psychological torment as like a final like nail in the coffin of of a of a brainwash yeah that's like like all of it was orchestrated all those years like from from the moment like i haven't seen you in years like that was that was purposeful. Like we we split up so you could go do this so I could fuck fuck it all up in the end. I, that's like something I was getting from this movie. I don't know if that's even close to right. Um but like there was some like overarching plan the whole fucking time. Okay, yeah. Um Was there? I don't know. I could I, mean, I, I, I definitely didn't like read into it like that far where it's like yeah, like all orchestrated. I kind of more read okay. into like yeah, just like um, toxic relationship, gaslighting type situation, you know, where, you know, like, him being a master manipulator, being able to, like, um, I'll put in quotes, help, uh, these, like, um, former cult figures from, like, whatever, like, that church was, mm -hmm. like, reverse brainwash them back into reality, and then the church being like, no, you fucked us up, what are you doing? You're kidnapping our churchgoers, and, and you're doing regular brainwashing to them. So, like, it, it, it clearly establishes, like, that ability he has to um, man manipulate and gaslight in any just, like, normal effective relationship. So I think that definitely, like, leans credence to what you're thinking, that, like, this is part of, like, his plan um, and his just ability to, like, get um, our protagonist, this uh, female cop, 
or this female investigator to do mm-hmm. fucked up shit at, at his own will. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm excited to watch it again. Yeah, I, I, I definitely... I want to get a better version of it real bad. I, uh, I, I would also just, like, yeah, like, love, a, like, a full remaster of it, too. Just, like, full a, also, just HD. Yeah, be nice. Subtitles be were nice. rough. They were not... They were Like, the translation was just not great. Really? They chose some pretty, really blunt uh, ways of, like... You know, obviously, like, these words aren't one-to-one sometimes. Yeah. So, like, sometimes the English phrases they used in this were just, like, super, like unpoetic i oh, guess sure. yeah. uh and i'm not, just like not, they, not they, it's they like we're got... rewatching the red squirrel and just struggling to keep up right yeah no nothing like that like they were all on time and like things like that but like it was just bad it was a bad translation i feel like okay uh and i and i can't remember any specific examples but uh there was definitely somewhere i'm like all right like that's not how like, I understand that's, like, a one-to-one, but that's not how you would say it in English. So, like, it just takes... It makes it sound stupid, I guess. Yeah. Um, and usually they would, they would you know, a better a better transfer would you know, do it better. But, yeah. what do I know? Maybe there is one out there. Maybe there's a, is there a criterion for this yeah. movie? I don't know. Definitely not. Definitely not. I, I think if there were a criterion, uh, this movie oh, would be... What's on movie? No. No, it's not. What are you talking about? trailers on movie <laughs> maybe just the trailer yeah i was about to say like there's no way i don't know but um yeah again like uh like a, like a at least hd transfer i think would help um at least get the visual language across but i also do think like the low quality gives it a sort of like um like like this like unnatural vibe of like you know like something like you'd find on like the old internet that you shouldn't be seeing you know like, especially in, like yeah. some instances you know like just like some sort of like lost tape scp type shit you know like from the dark web even if it is just a regular sort of like police procedural you know investigating the this like um crime like this like um serial killer i don't know if you've seen the movie cure um, I have not. That's also it's another. Seven. Yeah, that's also a really great movie. I watched that at the trial on um, the other year, where that one's uh, also kind of like the same. It's another Japanese uh, cop thriller investigating a serial killer, where he's just like going after one guy who see he was like leaving behind clues, kind of sevenish style. And and it, this definitely falls into that same boat. Um, yeah. Or this one, I I think is also like just as effective, if not a little bit more. But again, I think a rewatch when I'm like well and awake and adjusted to what is going on around me. Um, I I feel like I could benefit more from too. That way, I'm able to like take everything in properly instead of worrying about like what is going on. <laughs> is this real? Yeah. Yeah, it might just be a movie that benefits from multiple viewings in general. Yeah. Um, but it, it also kind of reminded me a little bit of um, Decision to Leave. Okay, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, that's a good crime one as well. But yeah. th- there's a kind of because there's there's like a love interest between kind of like the bad guy and the and the good person. So yeah. Really, that's probably the only similarity there, but yeah, no, I, re- I really enjoyed it. I mean, I really like it for, for what it is. If the vibe was set fully, I mean, it, it really captured what it was, wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, it looked, again, I think they really put a lot of effort into trying to make it look good. I didn't watch a yeah. good copy, but like, there's a lot of good lighting. There's a lot of good, like, Oh, the ed- like, editing too angles. is like fantastic, also. Just editing, the choice, there's a lot of choices of like, how she watches um, pictures flick by it was giving me like epileptic epileptic seizure. Oh my god! Yeah, some, sometimes like, like yeah. some some of those like quick cuts and like bright yep. flashes of like images were just insane. Like, yeah, I, I was oh. yeah like again like as tired as I was watching, it's like struggling just be like not just like 
do, doing my best to like keep like keep focus on like what I'm looking at and not just be like blindsided. God, the end of the movie was so fucking cool too. Uh where it was just him smiling and <laughs> yeah, like yeah. looking straight into the camera. Yeah, I I I again love to be able to like yeah, like rewatch it. Um I don't know how soon I'll get to it, but definitely give it another go around. I know it's yeah, like um, is... the director's got like some other movies I've been meaning to check out. Some of them have played at the trial on too, like within the past year. He does a lot of um Christ, he, he's got like a, a lot of shorts going on. Um All right. He's done one that I've been meaning to check out, like Electric Dragon, eight thousand volts. I remember seeing the trailer for that. Yeah, yeah that played at the. Yeah, no, that played at the trailer when we saw um the 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 junkhead. Junkhead, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely like to see what else this guy's cooking up, especially if it is like this very like like Tokyo neo punk aesthetic, and then like contrast that with the uh, Angel Dust. Yeah. God, this movie was. I, I liked it. I'm yeah. just popping through, popping through the scenes at, at right now. Uh, there's a lot of tense, a lot of tense moments. I mean, there's even just like the moments of where she's talking to him are just like so well crafted. Um, yeah. What else? What else? Is it that weird though? Is it? The, I mean, it really is just another like police procedural i mean like there's a lot of like yeah like dream like night like nightmarish elements to it but yeah i mean like it does it belong on the weirdo watch list i really don't think yeah. so i, I don't mean, think anything out of like out of the ordinary is really happening no, it's just yeah. good filmmaking i mean good dreamlike stuff i mean dreamlike doesn't mean weird i mean Especially since, like, the dream, like, is just feeling like it's a regular human dream you would have in your sleep rather than just bizarro shit happening all around you. Right, right. So, I mean, I mean a great movie doesn't yeah. belong on the list, though. I, I think, I think like, Let's I've been out. thinking about it. Like, the real point of the weirdo watch list is to be like, you're a weirdo if you've seen this movie or know what it is. But then again, like, you can say that about, like, a lot of, like, yeah. F- movies, you know, like... You're a weirdo if you think Red One's a good movie, but that's again like, right? Is that a weird movie? Certainly not. So, I think I think like keeping it to our definition of just traditionally weird, or something about it just do- is off, slightly right. off, as they say. Yeah. Or like this movie certainly has something that is slightly off about it with its very dreamlike aspects to it. Um, where something about it is just unnatural and uncanny, but in terms of, again, like that traditional weirdo definition, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what are you giving it out of 10? Let's do it out of 10. Solid 8 out of 10. Um, 8 out of 10. I feel like that would stay firm on rewatch. I feel like 8 is going... On rewatch, once I understand it a little bit more, yeah. there's a couple pieces that I know that I'm missing that is a personal thing that the movie explained and I just didn't get, probably. I'm going to give it a 7 now. It's going to probably be an 8 on rewatch, but... Nice. Great shit. Great shit. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it, too. I was, like, what, I was like thinking about it. I was, like, probably just a regular cop thriller. I don't know if he's going to gel with this one so much. I like that kind of thing. I fuck with that kind of thing. All right. Well, um, if, if, if that means it's that time of the episode where we announce the next movie, which it means it's your turn to pick. It's my turn to pick, and I am choosing the movie called Uncle Boon Me, Who Can Recall His Past Lives. Uncle, okay. I, okay, I, I yeah, found it. It's been Sweet. on my list for a long time, and I don't remember why. Um, somebody recommended it to me. Uh, it's got a couple of very varying scores from the people I follow. It's from Thailand. Okay. Yeah, it's... I watched the trailer before the podcast, and I'm like, oh, this is not what I expected. It looks a little slower than I expected. Um, but it's only... You know, I don't think it was that long. 114 minutes, so a little, un- little under two hours, which this oh, one's okay. 117, so about the same runtime. 
Okay, well, not that short then, but whatever. Um, I've been really fucking fascinated with, like, not just past lives, but, like, a collective life. Uh, sure. Kind, kind of anyway. like, yeah, exploring what's uh, been going on, what's going to happen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and this movie, I think, is going to touch on that a, a shit ton. Okay. I think that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, so I'm in for that wild ride. Um, and it's directed by <laughs> So that's exciting. Love their work. Um, Have you seen any movie this guy's done? Because I only recognize like no, the poster I, of Memorial Life. Tilda Swinton. Oh, that is actually a, a person. Okay, yeah, I actually recognize that too. <laughs> I didn't expect to recognize anything. I was just sitting, yeah, like <laughs> marking that the name is very long and impossible to probably pronounce for my dumbass. So, well, so that's the movie. Uh, I think okay, you can, yeah, like you can uh, for sure rent it. Yeah, for it's four dollars. Yeah, rentable for a couple bucks. It's on. It's streaming. What is this streaming site? It's got an Something. end on it. Oh, Metagraph. Metrograph. So. Uh, look, yeah, if you have that. But yeah, I, th I think this is specifically, like, um, one of the movie theater chains. Uh, kind of like the Alamo Draft House. Speaking of the Alamo Draft House, they're playing Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping. In no way. Feb February is a sing-along movie party. <laughs> oh. I'm on the website right now. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to bring it up earlier in the podcast, but totally forgot. That's a great... So, a yeah. Great thing. February 4th, I think, they're playing it. Again, they're going to have Connor for real swag. I think there's going to be, like, a gold chain necklace and sunglasses that say most humblest. Hell yeah. So, I think I'm definitely going to be trying to go to that. Incredible. That sounds like my type of shit. Yeah. I need to be there. All right, let's go. I, I hot rod think, movie party too. Yeah, they're doing a hot rod. They're doing a they, yeah. They put out a bunch of like awesome shit uh, for January yeah. also that I'm gonna try to go to. Wow. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm into it. All right. Um, All right, you my guys, friend. you the audience are not invited to go to that unless you live in the area, but. In the meantime, uh, check out Uncle Boon Me, who can recall his past lives. Again, it is available to rent at the major rental places, Amazon, Vudu, YouTube, whatever, or the two very obscure streaming services if you have them. And yeah, be sure to watch that and watch many, many, many other a movie uh, in the meantime. Um, do you have any closing thoughts? I don't. All right. That's it then. Thank you, everybody, for watching the podcast. Be sure to comment, subscribe, like, and share if you wish to. And, yeah, watch movies. Uh, see you next time.